Today we're going to determine the efficiency of a radiation detector. In this case I'm using the Gamma Scout, which has a little Geiger Muller tube inside where you can see the window just in front here, a thin Mika window. And we're going to use these radioactive sources with it to determine the efficiency. We're going to use strontium-90, which is a pure beta emitter, or rather pure beta emitter. And we're going to use barium-133, which is a pure gamma emitter. This will make a difference, as we will see in a second. As I said, this will be a geiger muller detector. And let's examine the sources. So the source, the actual radioactive source, is in the center here, in this bit. But of course it has a front side and a back side. So we can imagine that at least half the radiation will come out of the other side, as opposed to just the back side, of course. And it will come out the sides as well. We'll just verify this with our device. So let's hold one source in front with the proper side. And let's flip the source around. Okay, still a reading. And from the sides, yeah, still a reading as well. So if that is our radioactive source, there will be radiation coming out this side, this side, from the front side and from the back side, and from the sides as well. So we can imagine that if we have a Geiger Muller tube that is just measuring from one side here, and the Geiger Muller tube will actually be bigger than uh, the field of radiation if we are really close to the source, like here. So we can imagine that we are probably getting close to 100% what is coming from this side, but it will still be less than 50% of the total activity of the sample, so there will be radiation coming out the other side and from the sides as well. So we'll try to verify this today. Also, as I said, we're going to determine the efficiency. And this largely has to do with the type of radiation emitted by these sources, gamma radiation or beta radiation. We will see that in a second. So, first of all, let's have a look at the sources. What does it say? It says barium-133, a gamma emitter produced in September 2008, where it had an activity of 1 microcurry, and it has a half-life of 10.5 years. So, within 10.5 years, that activity will be reduced to half the activity. So, it will be 0.5 microcurry after 10.5 years. Now let's have a look. What is the microcurie? The microcurie is a unit that determines the activity of a sample. The curie equals to one gram of radium. So one curie means one gram of radium-226. That was back from the time where having one gram of radioactive material wasn't so uncommon. And it was named after Pierre and Marie Curie, who discovered radium-226. However, this unit is kind of bulky, so we're going to convert it. So, one curie also equals to 3.7 times 10 to the power of 10 bicarol. Now the bicarol, let me try and write it, it's French, so I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but still. The bicarol is a unit that determines the amount of decays per second. So bicarol, sorry. The Vicarel is decays per second. So our little source here has one microcurie. That's one multiplied by 3.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 10. But as this is micro, you know um, 10 to the power of minus 3 would be milli and 10 to the power of minus 6 would be micro. So it's micro curry, that's why we need to multiply this with 10 to the power of minus 6. So we can do this. 1 multiplied with 3.7 is still 3.7 multiplied with 10 to the power of 10 multiplied with 10 to the power of minus 6 will be 10 to the power of 4. So let's calculate 3.7 multiplied with 10 to the power of 4. So first of all we're going to remove that decimal point. 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 
four. So we got 37,000 becquerel in here, and that equals to 37 kilo becquerel. Kilo is a thousand, so we can remove these and make it into 37 kilo becquerel. So 37 kilo becquerel equal to one microcurie. But we have to take more stuff into consideration. As you can see, the half-life is 10.5 years, and the source has been produced in September 2008. So it's a little old. Uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, so we just determined the activity of one microcurie, which means the initial activity. So that will be called our activity zero. The activity at the time of production was 37 kilo becquerel. So what we want to determine is the activity at the currently given time. We will have to take into consideration, of course, the half-life. So let me just write down how to do this. We've got our initial activity of 37 kilo becquerel multiplied with E, that is the Euler number. It's a constant, so you don't have to worry about it. You just have to type it on your calculator, basically. It's, a, it's just a mathematical constant. Um, to the power of, in this case, the negative natural logarithm divided by the half-life. The T stands for time, half, so that's the half-life multiplied with the time that has passed, t. We will still have to calculate this. So the source was produced in September 2008. Now it's May 2011. That is equal to 56 months and that is equal to about 4.667 years. A stands for annum, that's Latin for years. We're going to have to uh, convert it to years, as our half-life will be given in years, in 10.5 years, which we will have to use here in our mathematical equation. So, let's see. It will be 37 kilo becquerel. I'll multiply it with that Euler number constant. Uh, 4.667 years. The half-life, oh actually we can, re we can replace the half-life in that formula already. 2.5a to 4.6a. Okay, so let's type this into our calculator. Let's start with the logarithm and then divide that by the half-life, which is 10 point five years. Then we will multiply that with the time that has passed so far. Four point six six seven years. Then we're going to have to negative this. And finally add the Euler constant. And then we're going to have to add the 37 kilobicarel, our initial activity. Well, add, multiply, sorry. Multiply it with the initial activity. Now equals to 27.18. So 27.18 unit will be kilobicarel, of course, as we used it here. So the total activity of the source will be 27,180 bicarel which equals to decays per second. Can't write. That divided by 2 will be 13,590 uh, impulses. We could sort of estimate coming from one side of the source. Well, it will be likely less than that, so we could well estimate it to be maybe 12,000 impulses from that side, or less than that, you could say less than that, maybe. So, let's see. So, I did this calculation again for the strontium-90 source, which is 0.1 microcurie and has a half-life of 28.8 years. So, 0.1 of 
Um, I don't know, I think eight years. I was like a 4.667 years. Will equal to 3,306 Bikaram. By the way, if you wanted to uh, find out the activity uh, of a source prior to this date, and let's say uh, 3,700 Bicarel was the activity of the source today, and you wanted to find out what the activity was one year ago, then you would simply um, have to discard the minus, the negative leading sign here, and apart from that, just multiply it with, well, would be one year now, and do everything exactly the same except for the leading minus here. And that is all. If you wanted to calculate an activity, how it has been before. Host runs in 90, which is a beta minus, or electronometer. Um, we have a current activity of 3306 Bicarel. The half of that, which we can sort of estimate to be coming from the source at one side, would be 1,650 impulses per second, probably less than that, maybe around 1,500 or so. And uh, barium 133, which is a gamma emitter, as it decays due to electron capture, um, has a current activity of 27,180 bicarol, and the half of that is around 13,590 impulses per second to be expected from one side of the source. Will be less than that. Well, let's see. But what we, of course, have to take into consideration as well is the background radiation, which we are going to have to subtract from our actual readings, just as we will measure the sources. Place it here. And measure the activity for one minute. I will be measuring the background radiation in one minute. We got 27 impulses a minute. So we'll write it down, 27 impulses for a minute. And to be even more accurate, it will be good if you could measure like the impulses for, mu for one minute, like maybe 10 times, and then take the average of that. So you will have an average impulses per minute. But I'm not going to do that right now because I'm rather short on time again. So we'll just take those 27 impulses per minute for granted, as it's not that much anyway compared to the activity of the sources and shouldn't make that much of a difference. But to be accurate, you'd have to make more, get more readings and then uh, use an average in your calculations. So. so what I'm going to do now is place so a radioactive source, barium-133 we want to measure in the exact same location, and then set the device to measure again. So the Gamma Scout is right on the source. Now I'm going to press the button here. We'll just wait one minute to get the total amount of counts. Okay, so as one minute has passed, we, we recorded 993 count, counts or impulses. 993 impulses per minute. And I'll do the same with the strontium 90 source. Okay, so I'm repeating the same for that strontium 90 source. And we'll just wait for a minute. Okay, and after one minute, we have 11,000. 410 impulses. Okay, so we have to take our impulses minus the background radiation and we'll be left with the, with the actual real impulses we got from the source, roughly. Divide that by 60 because we were taking the activity in Bicarel, which is uh, decays per second. So we're going to have to convert our units to impulses per second. And we got 16 impulses per second from the barium and 190 impulses per second for the strontium. So for strontium 90, we actually expected around 1,500 impulses per second on that one side of the source. In reality, we got 190 impulses per second, so that equals to about an efficiency of 12.6%. And for gamma radiation, we expected 12,000 impulses per second. For real, we got 16 impulses per second, which equals to 0.13%.
Now there's an explanation for why this is the case, because beta radiation is directly ionizing radiation and gamma radiation is indirectly ionizing radiation. Um, to explain what's really going on there, I recommend that you watch my other videos where I already explained this. So this video get, doesn't get all that long anymore. If you don't know what that is all about, please just check the other videos, which I'm going to link right here in a second. Should be here. I hope so. So you can check it out. Anyway, with our beta source, we got 12.6% of the activity. So while it should actually be at least 80% or more like uh, nearing a 100% for that Geiger Muller counter. So probably we didn't take uh, the geometry of the beam into consideration probably. Um, maybe it was more like this and our counter surface was like this. So we didn't take, we didn't measure the whole beam. Um, or it was more like this, who knows. Maybe there was more coming from the sides than we would have expected from the total source. Or maybe it's just um, that the efficiency of the Geiger Muller tube is down because it has been overused and um, it has basically reached the end of life, uh, which is a maximum of uh, 10 to the power of 12 ionizations for a Geiger Muller tube with a halo halogen uh, quenching gas and about 10 to the power of 9 for a Geiger Muller tube with a uh, organic component quenching gas, but should be about 10 to the power of 12 for the Gamma Scout. But we might have reached that already, so the efficiency of the detector is worse than it is supposed to be for a Geiger Muller tube, or the geometry of the source is not appropriate. But anyway, we just got 12.6% of the expected activity from the strong sim, from the beta source, and just 0.13% of the activity from the gamma source, well it should be around 1 to 2 percent in a typical Geiger Muller tube for the gamma radiation detection at this energy. If you've got any more questions about the calculations or whatever, just let me know. I'll try and answer them as, po as soon as possible. The problem is that I'm really busy lately, so uh, in the worst case it may take a few weeks until I can respond, but maybe other people will respond to you before I can then. Sorry about not being able to answer your emails lately, but I figured I'd rather, I'd rather use the free time today to produce in the video, so I might just still not be able to get all back to all the emails I got in the time, so well, sorry for that.